Hello, hello, hello. Guess who's here? Autoimmune Prepper. I know, I know, I know. It's been such a long time since I put out <clears throat> a video. So let me get started. Um, if this is your first time stopping by my channel, uh, thank you. I hope that you take the time to subscribe. Um, to my faithful subscribers, thank you so much for hanging in there, um, staying with me, uh, holding out for when I put out a new video. Um, again, the drill, I encourage everybody to give the video a thumbs up. Um, comment down in the comment section. Uh, it lets the YouTube algorithm know that there is some good content here and some interest in what it is I have to share and what I have to say. I um, think I mentioned thumbs up, comment, comment section. Um, <clears throat> I'm rusty because I haven't been here for a minute. Anyway, story time. Um, so coming on here, share some information with you guys. So you know sometimes from time to time, I uh, disappear. And you guys, for any of you who follow me and really pay attention, you know with the autoimmune illness, I experience bouts of um, phlegm, mucus for long periods of time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sometimes it develops into pneumonia. Um, other times it doesn't. So, any case, last week, Monday, well, let me back the story up a little bit. So, I was feeling kind of under the weather a little bit back in January. Um, went ahead, all the tests done, COVID tests, CT scan of the chest, whole bunch of other tests. And everything was, came back negative. So I thought, okay, well, maybe it's just the autoimmune acting up. So that was January. So maybe mid-February. It still hadn't really gone anywhere, the coughing and the phlegm and all of that. But I had my days where I would feel good. I would get out, do some stuff. And other days, <clears throat> not so much. So, February rolls around, and um, I just was not feeling any better. Just more mucus, more phlegm. So, I'm calling, making all these different doctor's appointments. You know, at this point, I want to see a, a ear, nose, and throat doctor. You know, because all of the mucus and the blowing of the nose, I wanted to... See, maybe, you know, maybe I had a sinus infection. I don't know. And um, especially since all the other tests had came back negative. So I had an appointment scheduled for um, last week, Monday. Anyway, as February went on, I just was not feeling well. I was just, I was extremely fatigued, very tired. I almost just couldn't stay woke. I would just be sitting on the bed rocking, you know, just slow motion. I had absolutely no kind of conversation for anybody on the phone, no text, no come over visit, nothing. I just had, I had nothing. And so that went on maybe about a week, week and a half. And I'm just like, just hang in there. Uh, you have a doctor's appointment. I think it was, might've been the ENT. Um, appointment and I'm like okay and if it, if they look at you and see something funny maybe they'll send you over to the emergency room or whatever so this is why it's important to know your body and pay attention so I pushed through that Monday rolled around last Monday I said okay wake up get yourself together Get in the shower, put some eyeliner on, and get over to your um, appointment. 
What did it for me? I could not take a shower. I was that weak. I could not bathe myself. I could not get a shower. And I'm like, oh no, something definitely is not, not right. So I eventually, and it took a minute, I eventually got to my phone and called 911. Paramedics arrive, you know, they come, they do their whole little check you out. So they put the oxygen thing on, <clears throat> you know, they check your oxygen because our oxygen in our bodies should be operating at 100%. Um, from what I'm finding out, no lower than 89, 88. M when I, I I didn't know at the time, I didn't know until I got to the hospital, because they did take me to the hospital, my oxygen level was at a 42. Do you hear me? A 42. I, pff, by the grace of God, I'm still here. You're supposed to be at 100. Oxygen going through your blood, getting to your brain, should be no lower than 88. I, mine was at 42. So as I'm in the hospital in, in the emergency triage, um, when the doctor came in, the doctor on staff came in, she's like, whew, your oxygen level was in the trash. And I'm like, what do you mean? She said, your oxygen level was 42. I mean, I don't really know what all that means at the time. But as time goes on, I'm hearing more and more, you should be no lower than an 88. I was at a 42. So I think I had one foot in and the other foot out. And it just was not my time to be all the way out. Because I, I have no idea how long I may have been that, I, you know, been operating or trying to survive on no oxygen in my body, I have no idea how long it, it had to have been for a while because, like I said, I was extremely, extremely fatigued more than usual. So, anyway, needless to say, they admitted me to the hospital. Um, but in the uh, ER, they run all the tests, they ran COVID, they had the come and do a chest x-ray, and lo and behold, I tested positive for COVID and pneumonia. So I had a double whammy, which explains the fatigue. And so one of the doctors told me, Let's, he said it's not even so much about COVID. He said the pneumonia is what was really um, affecting you. He said it just so happened that you tested positive for COVID. And <clears throat> like I said, it's so weird how fast stuff can happen because I just went, I just went for all those tests in January and they were came back all negative. Maybe it was too kind of too early. But I had been out and about um, in February. I had went and, and did um, my exam to renew my notary license. So I was ab amongst a lot of people there, out at the grocery stores, you know, out doing, you know, a little shopping. Um, I do a lot of Amazon and Walmart ordering. So <clears throat> who knows how... COVID made its way over. I mean, obviously, it, it had plenty of doors to come through um, to make its way to me. And so as I'm in the hospital, so I went in on a Monday. I got discharged on Thursday. Um, they sent me home with oxygen. So I'm to keep up with paying attention to my oxygen levels. Um, they'll do a re-evaluation of the oxygen in 30 days. Um, they have a follow-up COVID team that um, calls you like every other day, every two days to check on you. And 
So that's why I'm sitting here, y'all, in my uh, robe. Normally, I try to throw on something so I can look a little more decent. Anyway, I'm in the hospital, so I'm laughing to myself. I I'm grateful, first of all, that I was still among the living. But then I'm laughing to myself because I was always like, yeah, I, don't, I watch um, The Angry Prepper, and he, he be talking about bitch blood. And I'd be like, yeah, no, I don't have no bitch blood because I'm O positive and my blood is good. And then I'm like, in the hospital, I'm like, mm, I don't know about that blood now. But obviously, yeah, I don't have bitch blood because guess what? My body was still operating and hanging in there at a 42% oxygen level. So my blood was holding out for me. So yay, O positive. Anyway, so they put me on all these medications, um, antibiotics, steroid for a short course of steroid. Um, and then the medication Redizavir, I think that's the name was the name of it, um, to combat uh, COVID. Um, luckily, I was able to stay on a regular diet. And for anybody who has ever had to take steroids, oh, when they give you them steroids, your appetite is on a hundred. I was ordering everything on the menu, uh, which I should have known better because the very, very first time I ever went back in 2016, that's how I gained all that weight. <clears throat> I went up to like 200 pounds. Anyway, back at the ranch. So I'm getting all my medications every day. Um, nurses coming in, checking, checking on you, obviously. And so when I look back over the, the weeks before that, when you say, so I, I never really had any kind of COVID symptoms. It was always the symptoms of what I had had in the past, of the mucus and the phlegm and all of that, uh, which was related to the pneumonia. So with, lost my train of thought. No, so in the, um, the hospital, <clears throat> I did lose my train of thought. Anyway, um, Oh, no, this is what I was going to say. Thinking back, I did have one symptom, and that was my taste buds. But I never affiliated or put two and two together with COVID. So I would order, like, food, my favorite food. I would bite it, and it just it didn't taste good. Summer daughter-in-law. It didn't taste good. And so I just said, you know what? I'm going to kind of semi do a fast. I wanted to stay hydrated and I wanted to eat on something that I would enjoy. So I ate uh, watermelon. <clears throat> Even the watermelon did not taste good. So that's the only thing I can um, think back on to tie COVID into this. But thank God my taste buds are restored. So they're not distorted. Nothing tastes off or funny. So thank goodness for that. So anyway, again, <clears throat> went in on a Monday, came home on Thursday, came home with oxygen. So this now leads me into talking about how important it is with prepping. Now, unless you're living up underneath a rock, uh, you see what's going on with the inflation, the economy, all this Blah, 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 blah. All this weird weather <clears throat> going on, these bank runs or bank issues. I have made um, videos in the past warning not to keep all your money in the bank because when th things happen, you want to be able to have access to your money. You do not want to be one of those people standing out there in those lines, mad, banging on the door, 
and can't get in um, to get to your funds. <clears throat> no matter what financial level you're on, my suggestion, my advice, um, save what you can. I know it's not easy for everybody. Um, buy what you can. <laughs> Sorry. Buy what you can <clears throat> to put it away to add to your preps because you just never know what's waiting around the corner for you. What illness, what tragedy, what, you know, what emergency situation is around the corner. But if you're, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're semi prepared or very well prepared, then that's one less thing you have to worry about. I didn't have a lot that I needed to worry about because I have plenty of preps. I have all the things that I need um, here. I have uh, cash on hand. So I just want to reiterate that um, it's important to stay on top of your preps because emergency situations, they do come up and you don't want to be um, stuck without having the things that you need. I know many of you out there are loners, you're by yourself. Some of you don't have family, it's just you and your pet, or it's just you and one other individual. So I know, I can only imagine, I know it makes it that much harder um, to stay on top of things. So that's why every chance you get, um, just prep a little bit at a time. I don't want any of you <clears throat> having to suffer unnecessarily. You have the information, you have plenty of channels of people that talk about prepping, homesteading, and you know, all those things. Um, it's a great community. You find a couple of good channels that you watch and you stay on top of. Um, always do your own due diligence when it comes to um, anything, but um, keep Again, extra cash if you can um, to yourself, uh, for yourself, for your family, things that you and your family eat that you like, put away. Um, don't overwhelm yourself. Um, just take it one step at a time. Um, it's not too late to get started. Start where you are. And <clears throat> when we go back to talking about the health thing, um, hopefully you have life insurance, um, uh, able to, to have it. Um, there's something called, they always ask when you go to the hospital about a, a healthcare directive. So if you're incapacitated, uh, you have somebody that can make medical decisions on your behalf, um, have that in place if, if it, you don't already have it in place. Um, so there's when we talk about prepping, there are a, a lot of branches um, to prepping because we, we, we still live in, we, we go on every single day. And um, again, we prepare for emergencies and the unexpected and so on and so forth. Uh, it's great if you have a community to help, um, one neighbor, one friend, um, but if not, if you got to do it on your own, you got to do it on your own. Hey, we were born on our own. We're going to leave here on our own. So while we're here, um, take care of um, take care of yourself if that's how it has to be. As for, for me, um, I'm doing well, still getting acclimated to um, being back at home in my own environment. I use oxygen as needed and um, I'm just taking it one day at a time. So I wanted to come on here, say hi, I'm still here. Uh, let you know about this whole health thing 
And it is so it's so weird. Well, not weird, but <clears throat> they say, you know, if you have an underlying um condition, you should be vaccinated because um, you know, if 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 COVID hits you, it can be very, very bad. Everybody's body is different, so um that is true, I guess. Um, I have an underlying condition. Uh, again, never thought COVID would touch me, but it can reach out and touch anybody at any time. So just stay safe as possible. Um, stay aware, stay vigilant. And I will see you guys in another video. Stay well. Don't forget to wake up every day with the attitude of gratitude. We all have to be grateful. I'm so grateful. Let me tell you, 42%. My body was operating on 42% oxygen when it should have been no lower than about 89. Anyway, comments in the comment section. Any questions? Please feel free to ask, um, give the video a thumbs up, share it. Maybe this, my story can help um, somebody else. And other than that, um, looking forward to hearing from you guys. And um, I'm still here and I'll see you guys in the next video. No bitch blood over here. Bye.